Type to thrive when under pressure. under pressure. I see your life is drier than a desert. I'm drinking wine straight out the bottle on my level. <laughs> I don't worry about the drama and the hate that y'all be running up. Single bottle of champagne, we fill a second cup. I notice that they stare but never step it up. I get what I want and still can't get enough. I'm over the clouds with my feet on the ground. You couldn't catch me tripping over nothing. I'm whoever I want in this moment. It's impossible I'll ever lose and focus. Feeling sold out without seeing a crowd. You couldn't catch me tripping over nothing. I'm whoever I want in this moment. It's impossible I'll ever lose and focus. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Yeah. What's going on YouTube? I am Chris. Welcome to the Happy Accidents family. Be sure you guys go on down, hit that subscribe button, the like button on this video, and ring that bell for post notifications. This is going to be a uh, mini-series, multiple parts. Uh, part one of this mini-series is going to be discussing my journey through life with retinitis pigmentosa, otherwise known as RP. And uh, this is going to be discussing what it was like when I was a kid growing up. I was about four and a half, five years old when I first found out that I had vision problems. I think that was about the time I actually got my first pair of glasses. Now, that I don't really remember too well, but I do know that when I was younger, my mom and dad both noticed when we were out fishing. I ended up walking into this gigantic yellow pillar uh, that was by a parking lot to, that we were going back to the car from fishing. I ran right into it and it was pretty much under light, uh, the street lamps, and I still didn't see it and I ran right into it. And that was kind of about the time that we found out that I was having vision problems. Uh, now, my grandfather also has uh, retinitis pigmentosa or RP. Um, like I said, we're going to call it RP from here on out. Uh, he, he was diagnosed with it back, I think, in the 80s. Uh, now, he went through the military in the 60s, and uh, they knew that he had some eyesight issues, but at that time, they didn't know what it was. Uh, but that is a story for a different day. Now, growing up with RP was kind of rough, not really knowing how to cope exactly, and... There was a lot of times I would uh, beat myself up and put myself in some depressive states because of it. I would let it hold me back and now anymore I don't try to let it hold me back. I push and try to do just as much as any sighted person can do. Um, there's a lot of stuff I've been able to accomplish uh, over the years so anybody who out there who has vision disabilities or uh, any disability overall don't let anybody hold you back or tell you you can't do anything. It's, it's not an excuse for anything to, to take that you know laying down fight that's all I can say but when I was younger I noticed uh, that I, I had a hard time d telling distinctively through colors so I found out that I was colorblind and I also as well found out like I said that I was night blind and I can explain RP if I can I'm going to try to get some video put in here as well so you guys can see more along the lines of what I'm talking about what somebody with RP actually sees uh, that has vision now uh, retinitis pigmentosa will completely take your eyesight or can completely take your eyesight not always does it and every patient is completely different some some people will lose the center of their vision and they will remain to have the uh, the peripheral but uh, mine's the opposite it is taking the peripheral and I am remained with what center vision I do have so the best way to kind of explain it would be like looking through a paper towel roll with saran wrap at the end and a bit of like Vaseline smeared on it it's really distorted but something that's manageable uh, a lot of, lot of light, sunlight um, also kind of hurts uh, being out in sunlight. Uh, 
should be wearing sunglasses. Uh, it makes it really hard to see, though. Uh, putting sunglasses on, it makes it too shaded. And again, night blind and shaded spots, it's about the same thing. I, I have a lot of difficulty maneuvering and whatnot, so I end up not wearing sunglasses. Uh, dumb me, right? But... <laughs> Um, a lot of times I just end up wearing a hat, uh, like I always do. I just pull it forward and try to shield my eyes from the sunlight as much as possible. Uh, during the, the being inside, I should say, the lamps a lot of times don't really help. Now, when I was younger, they did. Um, to date, it, it, it doesn't really help too much. So... Walking through the house, I, you know, it's just, it's all on memory and knowing where everything is at makes it a little difficult having a, a youngin around and not being able to see. And he don't really understand quite yet. I mean, he's only about a year and a half and he don't really get the concept of, you know, dad can't see, so don't leave your toys lay in the middle of the floor. But um, that'll be something he will be learning about. Uh, as he gets older <clears throat> excuse me and so growing up though I, I know I know I had a lot of issues in school trying to see the chalkboard so they would always stick me in the front row of the classroom that that was something that didn't really help either as well uh, trying to take notes down trying to see the chalkboard and a lot of times I did not see what they were writing um, and I was always afraid to ask questions don't ever be afraid to ask questions that's what teachers are for and if they get upset with you for asking questions then you need to go higher up and say something to the principal um, have your parents go say something to the principal because it's not fair if you have issues they should be there to accommodate and try to help you in the long run I mean that's their job is to teach and you should be learning not walking away still scratching your head like what just happened but I uh, still I rode bikes as a kid um, would get out and rollerblade go swimming um, did all the natural things and whatnot. I, like I said, I still had a decent amount of vision then. Just night blind was about the only issue I had. Uh, as I started getting older, though, like I said, during the daytime, a lot of times I have a hard time seeing um, crossing streets now. Uh, I don't like to really do that by myself and, unless I've got, you know, my, uh, my cane with me. And I would rather be with somebody it's so busy around here with us having Cedar Point and the traffic coming in and out constantly. I, I wouldn't want to risk something like that. You, you don't want to ever let anything disability-wise ever get you down. Um, don't let it pull you into a depression. Like I said, I did that when I was younger and realized that it held me back from a lot of things. And... As I started getting older, I started pushing myself to do more, and I do all the video editing for this channel. I run a couple projects over on the Chris Six Asylum. I do editing for the Baby uh, Danny Land uh, channel as well when we post, uh, post up videos for that. Any of the uh, photos that you see that have been ed like heavily edited and photoshopped, uh, I do all that stuff as well. So. Just because you have low vision doesn't mean you can't do as well as others can. Um, I've played in a band. I've played multiple shows, and that doesn't slow anybody down. I mean, look, we have Ray Charles and uh, Stevie Wonder, who are both really good blind musicians. Um, Stevie Wonder's still alive, but Ray Charles is no longer with us. But as you see, the, being blind does not have to slow you down. Um, I end up teaching myself 13 different instruments uh, while not being able to see, just deciding to pick something up. And again, why not? Why, why not learn something? Uh, I've got plenty of time in the world to learn a new trade or a new task. And it's always good to learn something, at least one thing every day. Always make that a goal in life to learn something new every day. 
don't be afraid to go out and read as well. And um, being blind, we we get uh, the opportunity to read. It's just similar to Audible. Um, they do have a national library for the blind that will send you uh, different books on tape. And now they're starting to do a lot more of the Audible style, but it's free to the people who are visually impaired. Um, if you guys want information on that, I can try to get information for you guys on that. Just let me know down in the comments section as well. And for blind people, if you have issues watching movies, TV shows, there are different ventures out there for you. Uh, there is descriptive movies and TV shows for uh, visually impaired, and I've utilized that myself. There is a lot of DVDs now that come out, and they actually have that as one of the audio tracks, a description for the blind. And uh, if not, they also have some online you can get for free. There's somebody who has sat there and described the entire movie. Uh, does not take away from the movie. Actually, uh, my grandma, when she was still alive, she would watch a lot of the movies with my grandfather, and uh, she could see. And she said it actually added more to the movie, because there was a lot of times they would describe something that you might end up missing in the background that might have been a, a, a big point for the plot of the movie. So... It, it does actually help. Even if you are sighted, go try that out. Uh, it's not a, not a bad thing to look into. Doing, doing things in general, it can be kind of rough. Um, there's a lot of different tricks of the trade that you can do to try to make things a little easier. Uh, like my grandfather has things set up for the washing machine and the dryer he has little like press on velcro and uh, like little bubbles and whatnot that go on the microwave and he marks where things you know where at least where like the washing machine and the dryer where things need to be lined up and then he can hit start uh the uh, microwave he's got like I said little little stick on bubbles and he can stick them on certain numbers so he knows where right where certain numbers are and he can kind of go off of that and feel the rest <clears throat> now, doing some of this editing, that's a little more of a difficult uh, task, a lot harder to explain how I cope through getting, you know, into the editing portion of the videos and uh, with pictures. But something that I've taken a passion in, I started getting into video editing and audio editing probably when I was in my early teens. Um, I just started excelling in that because I figured if I ever went for a diploma in, you know, not a diploma, but a, a degree in college, that would be what I would probably go for is for audio visual, uh, editing or, you know, something, something along those lines, producing, mixing, mastering music, um, Never really thought about trying to learn another trade other than that exactly when I was that age. Uh, then as I started getting into my late teens and my 20s, I started learning how to do landscaping. And I started doing that as well on the side. Uh, I've done some housing construction, not being able to see. Um, there's a lot of things that we had to do to get around the fact that I had low vision. So like when I would go to paint a room, a lot of times we would fire up uh, a double halogen light, shine it on the wall that I was going to be painting. And anytime that I would move to the next area, I'd just sw swivel the light around and then I would just commence painting, you know, that area as well. But like I said, there is some ways to get around having low vision and being completely blind. There is some tricks of the trade. So if you guys are out there and you are alone, single, you live by yourself, you don't have anyone to depend on, don't, don't panic. There is ways to cope with the fact of not being able to see. There's a lot of us out there that do daily tasks, excuse me, do daily tasks, um, without the need of having somebody cited to help us. 
Um, we can wash dishes. That's not a big deal. Uh, we can vacuum. Uh, the trick I learned about vacuuming is actually do it with your shoes off. Uh, do it barefooted, and you can pretty much feel dirt and stuff that you've missed just walking around. L mowing is a little bit more of a difficult uh, task, and that's if you're trying to go for straight lines. If you're just trying to knock everything down, then that's not really too big of a deal. Um, you can possibly do that. It might be a lot harder to do. Um, there's a couple tricks with that as well. If you have something you can mark with, maybe like a gas can for instance, uh, you can always put that down at the end and try to aim right for it with the mower and just follow each of those. You know, like a as you're going, just take the can, move the can on the opposite side and try to aim right for it again. But that will take a lot longer, but it you can still accomplish it. I have never been able to obtain a driver's license. My eyes have been that bad. Um, I wished I could uh, drive, but that is what it is. I do a lot of cooking, and uh, that's a lot by feel. Uh, that's another thing that you can accomplish. Don't let that hold you back. You can cook. Um, there, there is ways to do that. There's a lot of tools out there for visually impaired that will, for like measuring cups, will let you know when you get to a certain point. Uh, they do have measuring spoons for visually impaired. There is tons and tons of things out there uh, in the for kitchen aids for visually impaired and legally blind uh, people. So again, take advantage of stuff like that. Get a hold of, of local areas that uh, have stuff uh, like that. You know, don't be afraid to contact people. People are willing to help. And, and if they can't help you, they will probably direct you in the right way to get that help. Big shout out to Cindy from Seeing Blind. Uh, you encourage me to try to share some of my story and the struggles that I go through. Uh, we would like to try to do a, a collaboration with Cindy from Seeing Blind soon. If you guys haven't, go on over and check out her channel. Uh, her channel is blowing up pretty big. She's over 200 uh, subscribers now, um, working her way to 300 subscribers. So be sure you guys are checking out her videos. Let's try to get Cindy partnered with YouTube. As she hits that 1,000 subscriber mark, Within a year, I'd love to see her get partnered with YouTube. That was is my goal, is to push other fellow creators, and especially creators that have inspiring content, trying to get people out there to do things with themselves. Be sure you guys are showing and sharing the love to Cindy as well. And that channel is Seeing Blind, and I will have the link down in the description below. I am going to do a second part to this video as well. If you guys missed the video that was posted on Friday, be sure you guys go and check that out. There's about a uh, almost 10 minute video that I put up of Kenny and a uh, little bit of everything uh, over the last uh, week and a half. So be sure you guys go check that video out as well. Uh, we are getting close to him walking, guys. It, it is It is going to happen here soon. Uh, Kenny has been taking a couple steps between chair to chair uh, without holding on to anything, but when it comes to further distances, he still grabs on to stuff. So hopefully here soon we will have video of him walking for you guys uh, without uh, grabbing on to things. And uh, I'm just so glad that you guys have joined the Happy Accidents family and are enjoying the blossoming of Kenny as well as we are and as much as we are um, it, it's it's been a godsend to be a parent it's amazing I'm telling you it is really amazing to be a parent I am so excited that I'm a daddy and I never thought I would say this and Honestly, I always felt like it would be a bad thing to be a parent with the eyesight problem. I was always so afraid that uh, he would end up or she would end up with the eyesight issues as well. And that actually isn't always the case. Not at all. So don't let that ever be a hindrance on you. And 
also, if you can cope, uh, there's ways that they can cope as well. Um, so don't let that slow you down. Do not let anything slow you down in life. Always try to push forward. Try to look out for each other. Just be sure you guys are staying safe during this whole pandemic and being sure you guys are not spreading germs. Look out for others as well. We just got to get things built back up as a country and get things operating again at a normal rate of speed. And this really sucks, but you know, it could be worse. So be sure you guys go on over to the Chris six asylum, hit that subscribe button over there. If you haven't hit the like button on the last video, it was a vengeance WWE 2k20 vengeance pay-per-view stream that me and my brother, uh, Scotty pockets. I've been doing a project of, uh, also over there. There's the asylum rock and wrestling podcast that is going to be starting here soon uh, i did the first episode of the rockin part but uh the wrestling is going to be probably another couple weeks um, we're going to be delving into some wrestling news of uh, stuff about different superstars things about different multiple brands uh, like AEW, wwe uh, uh new japan and then as well as we'll be doing a lot of talking and discussing about PVS, uh, which is the Pockets versus Six project that him and I work on as well. The music portion, if you guys are in a band or an artist, a rap artist, anything um, like that, and you're trying to build your channel, your brand, uh, your band, you're trying to get noticed let me know. Drop a comment down in the comment section. Share your band's story, your information, your artist story with me, and I will get a podcast made for you. That is what the Rock and Wrestling podcast is for. It's not just aimed at, at uh, wrestling. There is two separate podcasts there. One is all music, and the other one is all to do with wrestling. So if you guys want your, uh, your songs promoted... Um, you guys have music videos coming out. I can discuss that as well. So that is what that end is all detailing. So be sure you guys go on over there and drop some comments and down in the comment section if you are or know any bands that are looking for promotion. And uh, I will do that for you guys. Uh, you Got to look out for the local artists because the local artists is where everybody starts. If you guys haven't, go on down, hit that subscribe button down below here on this video. Be sure you guys drop a thumbs up on this video as well and ring that bell for notifications. Go on over to Baby Danny Land. Be sure you guys subscribe to her channel as well and ring that bell for notifications. There's going to be some videos coming out here soon and also some covers. As you see, I've got the new studio mic, so we're going to be doing some covers here soon. And um, I'm already looking into some stuff. Uh, I'm looking into doing another Kid Rock cover for you guys and possibly an Alice in Chains cover as well. I'm not too sure, but we have the means to do it um, and it's about to be time. So be sure you guys are checking that out as well. Big shout out to all of those that have subscribed here recently um, between the Chris Six Asylum and the Happy Accidents family and a big shout out to a Scribe Squad. A Scribe Squad? Scribe Cash. That's what I'm trying to say. Scribe Cash. Go on over and check out Scribe Cash as well. She has a lot of encouraging motivational videos as well as reactions. And uh, she is a really, really decent content creator. So be sure you guys go on over and check her out. She has new music coming out as well. Big shout out to Mr. Jones. And that is Mr. Jones, spell M-R, space, J-1-S. He is out of Long Island, New York. He's a rap artist. And uh, actually, we'll have to say he's become a, a pretty good friend of mine here recently. And he is a big supporter of the Chris Six Asylum and all the projects that we're doing over there. And we're just trying to promote each other, so... Be sure you guys check him out. He is on Amazon Music and I think iTunes and 
Spotify. So be sure you guys are checking him out. He also has some stuff here on YouTube as well. You don't want to miss out the fire tracks that Mr. Jones is releasing. Um, I think that is it on all my shout outs. But like I said, we'll have another part to this where I explain a little bit more. And I'm going to try to put some video in here so you guys know, uh, like I said, the what it's like to have RP, uh, what we see, and hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Um, this is my first one of uh, many probably to update you guys about my vision problem. Um, I didn't really exactly know what to say. This is all off script and off the top of my head, so it seems a little out of sorts, but hey, it is what it is. It's what I'm feeling and what pops into my head at that moment and when. So, love, peace, chicken grease. Catch you guys in the next video. And uh, hopefully you guys subscribe to the family and you join the Happy Accents family. Bye.